In addition to bycatch species that are not tuna, we're also working on trying to minimize the impact of fishing on small or juvenile tuna. And here we present some of that research. In this slide, we can see some of the experiments we're doing with acoustic discrimination. We've tested in our ISSF campaigns in the Western Pacific some novel equipment where we have three echo sounders at 38, 120, and 200 kilohertz frequencies, which zoom on the fish under a fad at the same time. We know that the response that the echo sounder receives from the tuna schools is based primarily on the air bladder that, or swim bladder that fishes have in their bodies. And skipjack have a very small swim bladder, whereas big eye and yellowfin have a swim bladder. This swim bladder is used to move up and down the water column. And when there's a big air bladder, you get a bigger signal because the difference between air and water density is greater. So what we've done is try to create screens when we look with the echo sounder down into the fish that are under the fad and see if with these screens we can identify which species are forming those schools. So for example, in this slide we can see that Skipchak has uh, no swim bladder, there's a strong difference in the image that we receive when inspected with 38 kilohertz frequency and when inspected with a stronger signal of 120 or 200. And we can see that with these images, we can know if there are skip, a lot of skipjack or not under that fad. Whereas when we look at big eye and yellowfin, which have a larger swim bladder, when we zoom in with the three frequencies at the same time, we see that the difference is not so great between strong signal and weak signal. So we're still working towards improving how we can know with the acoustics of the boat which species are in a fad and be more selective in that way. One of the things that we did also in our last research cruise was have a fad and attach several brands of eco sounder buoys and examine also with the eco sounder of the boat what kind of images or information we were getting back from the different brands. And this helps to try to understand and calibrate better what's in the school underneath and what we receive and what the fishery is receiving when he's in the boat. We've tried to also tag those animals with electronic tags, the different species, and see how they move up and down in the water column and try to translate that or put it at the same time with the images from the ecosander and understand better what the images of the ecosander are saying, which species they're really showing. So that's something that we're trying to further and advance in. In this slide, and just to summarize the basis of this workshop that you have just seen online, we like to say that it's important to see where the market is going and how there's consumer pressure to fish more sustainably. That's what people demand when they buy their products. There's an advantage for the fleets in being more sustainable. They open markets and is generally better for the business. We are trying to be more selective and we propose these measures that you may apply in your boat. And the primary thing is if you can avoid catching it, that's the most efficient to reduce by catch. Then we see that when they are in the net, 
how can we get them out of there? If they've gone on the boat, how can we release them from the deck? And if not, if it's possible to use, utilize those species, then that's another option. We strongly encourage everyone to put into practice the best release methods from deck. And throughout the future, we'll be continue with our research. We'll try to give you feedback on what we've been doing and show you the new results and propose measures that we arrive at. And we'd really like to thank fishers and everyone involved in the industry because we think that collaboration between fishers and scientists and the industry is essential for a sustainable fishery. In this last slide, we'll leave you our website of the ISSF where you'll find lots of information on bycatch and many other issues in the tuna fishery. We also leave the emails of the presenters. If you have anything that you would like to discuss with us or ideas to improve the measurements that we've proposed, we are very happy to listen from you and we'd really like to thank you for your time and your attention.